Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and uh, thank you for joining us for the weekly briefing. We begin with the ongoing visit of the Foreign Minister uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari to the United States. The primary purpose of the visit was to attend the ministerial conference of the G77 in China at the United Nations headquarters in New York and to hold consultations for the international conference on climate resilient Pakistan to be held next month in Geneva. The foreign minister chaired the ministerial conference of the G77 in China on 15 to 16 December 2022. The conference was convened by Pakistan in its capacity as the chair of the G77, the largest block of developing countries within the UN system. At the ministerial conference, the foreign minister highlighted the need for multilateral mechanism for sustainable management of the sovereign debt of developing countries and for lowering of borrowing costs for them. He called for fulfillment of the agreed official development assistance ODA target of 0.7% of the GNI of developed countries, promoting sustainable infrastructure investments and an equitable international information technology regime. Foreign Minister also emphasized full implementation of the climate change agenda and climate commitments in accordance with the principles of equity and common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. He added that restructuring the international trading system is critical to revive export-led growth in developing countries. The ministerial conference adopted a concrete outcome document spelling out the gr group's strategy to address common challenges in achieving the SDGs in face of present challenges and building resilience to respond to future crises. On 16 December 2022, the Foreign Minister met with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. They discussed the International Conference on Climate Resilient Pakistan and international support for Pakistan's long-term recovery, rehabilitation and restoration needs based on post-disaster needs assessment. Foreign Minister also met with UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed and President of the UN General Assembly, Saba Kurosi. The Foreign Minister held bilateral meetings with counterparts from developing countries, including Cuba, the incoming chair of G77 in China for the next year. He briefed his interlocutors about Pakistan's relief and recovery efforts following the recent floods. As we conclude our chairmanship of G77 in China, we can say with satisfaction that throughout 2022, Pakistan played a leading role in highlighting the issues of importance for developing countries, such as sustainable development and climate change. An important achievement this year was the establishment of a loss and damage fund at COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, where Pakistan led the cause of developing countries and forging a historic consensus. Pakistan's chairmanship of G77 in China concludes this month. However, it will continue its traditionally active and constructive multilateral diplomacy in advancing the common interests of the Global South at the United Nations. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari had a very productive visit to Washington, D.C. He had a busy visit schedule, which included engagements with the administration and members of the U.S. Congress, speaking engagements at two prestigious think tanks, interaction with Pakistani American community leaders and D.C.-based think tanks community, as well as interviews with leading media outlets. The main purpose of the visit to Washington was to continue discussions on Pakistan-U.S. cooperation in flood relief, rehabilitation, and reconstruction efforts, and enlist U.S. support for the International Conference on Climate Resilient Pakistan. The visit also provided an opportunity to review the entire scope of bilateral relations and discuss important regional and global developments. On the administration side, 
the foreign minister had a comprehensive conversation with the Secretary of State Blinken, during which both sides covered a wide range of issues of mutual interest and meetings with other senior administration officials, including USAID Administrator Samantha Power, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, and Counselor to the Secretary of State Derek Scholle. During the Foreign Minister's last visit to Washington, D.C. in September, a bipartisan group of U.S. Senators had invited him to visit again in December to discuss further cooperation on flood relief, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The Foreign Minister, therefore, had several important meetings at the U.S. Congress. These included a joint meeting with a bipartisan group of Senators, including Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Democratic Senators Bob Menendez, Jean Shaheen, and Tim Kaine. The Foreign Minister held separate meetings with Senator Chris Van Hollen, Senator Gary Peters, and Senator Ben Ray Luhan, and a joint meeting with Congressman Brad Sherman and Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. He also had a virtual meeting with Congressman Amy Vera, chairperson of the House Subcommittee dealing with Asia. On the think tank side, the foreign minister addressed and engaged with scholars and think tank experts at the Heritage Foundation and the Atlantic Council. The foreign minister had interactive sessions with the Pakistani American community leaders, representatives of leading think tanks, and journalists from prominent media outlets. The visit that concludes today was another important step towards further strengthening Pakistan's broad-based bilateral ties with the United States. This week, Pakistan will host two important dignitaries from Central Asia. On 22nd to 23rd December 2022, His Excellency Sarek Shuman Garen, Deputy Prime Minister for Trade and Integration of Kazakhstan, will lead a high-level delegation for Pakistan-Kazakhstan Intergovernmental Joint Commission, an important mechanism to promote mutually beneficial cooperation. The 11th session of the commission will be co-chaired by Kazakh Deputy Prime Minister and our Minister for Economic Affairs, Mr. Ayaz Sadiq. The meeting will focus on cooperation in trade and investment, agriculture, energy, transport and industry, science and technology, banking, higher education, and tourism. On 26 December 2022, Deputy Prime Minister for Trade and Investment of the Republic of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Mr. Jimshed Khodayev, will arrive in Islamabad for a two-day bilateral visit. He will lead a high-level delegation which will hold talks on a range of issues, including trade, investment, and connectivity. The visit is taking place in follow-up of the important understandings reached between the President of Uzbekistan and Prime Minister of Pakistan during their meetings held in September 2022 in Uzbekistan and in October 2022 in Kazakhstan. Yesterday, we released a statement expressing our disappointment on the suspension of university and higher education for female students in Afghanistan. Our position on this issue has been clear and consistent. We strongly believe that every man and woman has the inherent right to education under the injunctions of Islam. We strongly urge the Afghan authorities to revisit this decision. We cannot deprive the enterprising and innovating, innovative Afghan women the right to progress and to follow their dreams. They have full and equal rights to participate in all aspects of life. Last week, the Indian delegation once again politicized an international forum to project its agenda to target and malign Pakistan. For the last several year years, India politicized the FATF process to prevent Pakistan's exit from the gray list and is following a similar agenda at the UN Security Council. For a country that has a grandiose vision about itself and its place in the world, India has been unable to act as a responsible member of the international community that can assume new privileges that it aspires. 
India masquerades itself as a victim of terrorism, yet it is itself a perpetrator of repression in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and a sponsor and financier of terrorist groups in South Asia, including Pakistan. We are concerned about the rise of extremist nationalism in India and its expansionist designs for the region. We still await condemnation from the Indian leadership on the recent call for violence and assassination by a BJP leader from Bhagpat. India also continues with its policy of coercion and intimidation of the people of the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. This week, it killed three Kashmiri youths in a fake encounters in Shopia district in IIOJK. The occupation authorities are sealing properties owned by Kashmiris, including those dedicated to educational institutions offering free education to disadvantaged Kashmiris. A property owned by late Hurriyat leader, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani, located in Barzula, Srinagar, has also been designated for closure. You would recall that Sayyid Ali Gilani was not allowed a proper burial by the Indian occupation forces when he died in captivity last year. His family continues to be harassed for their contribution to the just struggle of Kashmiris to seek their inalienable right to self-determination. India must be held accountable for these grave injustices. The only way to lasting peace in South Asia is by granting the people of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir their inalienable right to self-determination as enshrined in the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. I thank you. Yes.